हॅलो गाईज आय एम डॉक्टर रवींद्र सावरकर अँड आय वेलकम यू बॅक टू मेड स्कूल टॉपिक फॉर दिस व्हिडिओ इज ॲक्युट कोरोनरी सिंड्रोम ॲक्युट कोरोनरी सिंड्रोम इज अ स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ डिसऑर्डर वेअर ब्लड फ्लो टू मायोकार्डियम इज कम्प्रोमाइज ड्यू टू ऑक्लुजन इन कोरोनरी आर्टरीज युजली बिकॉज ऑफ थ्रोम्बोसिस ड्यू टू रपचर इन ॲथोस्क्लोटिक प्लाक क्लिनिकल प्रेझेंटेशन डिपेंड्स ऑन एक्सटेंट ऑफ ऑक्लुजन सिम्टम्स आर मोर सिव्हिअर when major coronary artery is blocked as compared to when smaller branches are blocked symptom also depends on severity of onset symptoms are more severe when occlusion develops suddenly and less severe when occlusion develops slowly presence of collateral circulation provides protection against development of ischemia hence symptoms are less severe in presence of collateral circulation symptoms of myocardial ischemia includes retrosternal chest pain uneasiness excessive sweating palpitation etc acute coronary syndrome includes unstable angina non st elevation myocardial infarction that is nstmi and st elevation myocardial infarction that is stmi ecg changes that suggest acute coronary syndrome includes tall peak t wave t wave inversion ST segment depression and ST segment elevation All ECG changes just mentioned should fulfill two prerequisite condition to be considered as significant First changes should satisfy predefined criteria for extent of each changes which are discussed in detail later Secondly these changes should be present in two or more contiguous leads Now you must be thinking what are contiguous leads you already know this just the word is new there are three groups of contiguous leads anterior leads which are lead v2 v3 and v4 depicts changes in anterior wall ischemia lateral leads which are lead v5 v6 1 and avl depicts changes in lateral wall ischemia and inferior leads which are lead 2 3 and avf depicts changes in inferior wall ischemia now let's understand peculiarity of each ecg changes depending on which they are considered significant or non significant significant tall t wave should be symmetrical should have pointed or peak tip should be taller than 0.5 millivolt that is 5 mm or one large box in limb leads and should be taller than 1 millivolt that is 10 mm or two large boxes in precordial leads obviously this amplitude criteria is with standard calibration in this ecg t waves are symmetrical and peak that is having pointed tip t wave in lead v3 and v4 are more than two large boxes that is 1 millivolt tall while t wave in lead v2 and v5 are not taller than 1 millivolt hence t waves in lead v3 and v4 are symmetrical peaked and presenting two contiguous leads hence these changes are significant t wave inversion in myocardial ischemia is peculiarly symmetric and its nadir or deepest part is pointed So T wave inversion in myocardial ischemia appear like this whereas T wave inversion due to other causes like left ventricular strain or digitalis toxicity are asymmetrical with blunt nadir this T wave inversion appear like this this symmetric and pointed T wave inversion should be more than 0.1 millivolt that is 1 mm or one small box in two or more contiguous leads with prominent r wave or rs ratio more than 1 this ecg has t wave inversion in all precordial leads that is lead v1 to v6 are all this t wave inversion significant let's see lead v6 has t wave inversion which is not more than 1 mm deep so it's not significant lead v1 and v2 don't have prominent r wave or rs ratio is not more than 1 so even if this t wave inversion are more than 1 mm deep these are not significant lead v3 v4 and v5 
हैव प्रॉमिनेंट आर वेव दैट इज आर एस रेशियो मोर दैन वन एंड टी वेव इन्वर्जन आर मोर दैन वन एम एम डी सो ऑल दिस टी वेव इन्वर्जन आर सिग्निफिकंट आउट ऑफ दिस लीड्स लीड वी थ्री एंड वी फोर बिलोंग्स टू सेम कंटीन्यूस ग्रुप दैट इज एंटीरियर लीड्स हिंस देर टी वेव इन्वर्जन आर ट्रूली सिग्निफिकंट This ECG also have inverted T waves more than one mm deep in leads having prominent R waves, or RS ratio more than one. But these inverted T waves are asymmetrical, hence does not indicate ischemia. ST depression is of three types: upsloping ST depression, downsloping ST depression, and horizontal ST depression. ST depression is considered significant. when it is more than 0.5 millivolt that is 0.5 mm or half of one small box for practical purpose visibly appreciable st depression is likely to be significant out of these three types upsloping st depression is commonly present with tachycardia and considered non significant if not associated with clinical sign of ischemia you must be aware of the popular sportwear brand nike and you must have seen this logo don't you think it look like upsloping st depression just to remember a person jogging regularly with nike shoes will not have ischemia similarly person having their logo that is upsloping st depression in ecg will not have ischemia there is tachycardia in this ecg some precordial leads are showing upsloping st depression which are considered non significant for ischemia if there are no clinical signs there are horizontal st depression in lead v3 v4 v5 and v6 which are more than 0.5 mm deep it is present in two leads in anterior group and two leads in lateral group hence these st depressions are significant there are downsloping st depression in lead v4 v5 and v6 these depressions are more than 0.5 mm and present in two contiguous leads that is lead v5 and v6 hence these changes are significant st depression can also be present as a reciprocal changes reciprocal changes usually present in area electrically opposite to the region of ongoing ischemia leads overlying ischemic zone shows st elevation while leads over electrically opposite area shows st depression as reciprocal changes like in this ecg st elevation is present in lead v1 v2 and v3 st depression in inferior as well as lateral leads are nothing but reciprocal changes significance of st elevation depends on which lead it is present in in all leads except lead v2 and v3 st elevation more than 0.1 millivolt that is 1 mm or one small box is considered significant for st elevation in lead v2 and v3 gender of the patient is taken into consideration in male patient with age less than 40 years st elevation more than 0.25 millivolt that is 2.5 mm is considered significant whereas if age is more than 40 years st elevation more than 0.2 millivolt that is 2 mm is considered significant to remember this you can use the logic that for younger patient one need greater st elevation to confirm the diagnosis of mi in female st elevation more than 0.15 millivolt that is 1.5 mm in lead v2 and v3 is considered significant there are st elevation in lead v2 to v6 changes are so prominent that it can be considered significant even on overlooking this ecg you don't need to apply any criteria in such cases now just look at this ecg it appears like normal at first glance but if you look at lead v2 and v3 closely in lead v2 st segment is elevated by 2 mm that is 0.2 millivolt while st segment in lead v3 is elevated by 1.5 mm that is 0.15 millivolt so if we apply the criteria 
if patient is female then changes are significant and if patient is male then changes are non significant this criteria just act as a guide not absolute rules clinical feature is the most important aspect to consider and it may take time for ecg changes to appear after onset of ischemia so golden rule to remember is always consider the diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome even if ecg is normal but clinical features are classical with this we conclude this video next video will be about unstable angina and enstema thank you for watching this video till the end If you have any query or suggestion please write it down in comment section If you like my work please like this video and share it with your friends To get notified about next video upload please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon Till next video take care and keep learning